All right, let's go ahead and get into it here. Uh, it's one of the strategies you could use for the uh, motorcycle problem. You could draw a picture, um, you draw, uh, so it helps you to write out what you know, and uh, you want to choose the equation. Uh, so, first of all, if I just write the givens, I know that initial velocity is 6.5 uh, meters per second. It's going to the west, and my final velocity is going to be 9.2 meters per second. That's also going to the west. Uh, so my change in displacement, I'm going to call this delta x, is going to be 48 meters. Um, we just don't know the acceleration. Uh, so the equation that I'm going to use, I have to know what has initial velocity, final velocity, displacement, and acceleration. It's like, which one of our Fantastic Four equations use all that? Well, if I study it and pick one out, I notice that there's one that has final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the displacement. I can uh, rearrange that to find acceleration. I could uh, pop out final velocity squared, uh, make it final velocity squared minus initial velocity uh, squared, and um, have that equal two times the acceleration times the delta x. And then I can get the, I isolate the acceleration, right? So I can get rid of the two and the displacement. So I could say uh, final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared divided by two times the displacement is equal to uh, acceleration. So I just like to rearrange it. It makes it a little easier for me. And then I substitute and solve. I have a lot more room on my left side, so I'm gonna go ahead and jot that down in there. So ultimately it's a 9.2 meters per second. That gets squared minus 6.5 meters per second. That gets squared all over two times the displacement of 48 meters. It's equal to my acceleration. So I can say my acceleration. If I punch in my calculator, I get something like 0 0.44 one six meters per second squared. Um, meters get squared, seconds get squared. So my units look like uh, meters squared divided by second squared over meters. So one of those meters cancels out and we're left with meters per second squared. So just so you know it all gels. Uh, if we round it out for correct sig figs, we'd have to say that it's 0 0.44 meters per second squared. Uh, the direction is to the west. Uh, for this rocket ship, it, it might help to draw like a picture of the rocket, like, you know, going off and up into the air, right? Um, it might help you to understand that up is positive. So um, the strategy though first, uh, first, find the final velocity. Um, so I'm going to take an equation and I'm going to rearrange it to solve for final velocity. Okay. So um, if I want to take this equation that delta x is equal to one half of a velocity final minus or plus velocity initial times time. I can use that to find final velocity. So uh, what were my things that were given? I was given initial velocity is zero because it takes off from rest, right? We have to assume that it takes off from rest, but it also tells us it takes off from rest. Um, and it gives us the time of 5.2 seconds and it tells us the displacement going up um, now 
if I want to talk about uh, displacement going horizontal, I've been using X, right? If I'm talking about displacement going up, let me just use Y, okay? So delta Y in this case is, I wish this thing would stop moving around, sorry guys, 5.7 times 10 to the second meters. It's positive because it's going up. And I just don't know my final velocity. I also don't know my acceleration. So those are the two things it makes us find. First, if we could find uh, final velocity, then maybe we could use another equation to find uh, acceleration. So moving over here on the left side, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just say to find final velocity. Here's what I should do. I should take uh, the displacement is equal to one half the final velocity plus the initial velocity times the time. Uh, rearranging that, you could say two times the displacement um, over the time is equal, uh, sorry, minus the initial velocity is equal to the final velocity. Um, all the physics books that I've ever had have always like showing you to rearrange the equation. If you just want to plug and chug, go ahead. Um, but I find this to be much easier. So let's go ahead and substitute. We're going to take uh, 2 times 5.7 times 10 to the second uh, meters. Divide that by the time, 5.2 seconds. And we're going to subtract our 0 meters per second. And that should equal our final velocity. OK. Uh, so our final velocity is 219.23 meters per second. Um, it's going to be a positive because it's going up. And, um, you know, if you wanted to round it at that point, you could say it's 220 meters per second. But I like to keep the actual digits if I'm going to use them again. So maybe jot that on the side somewhere or keep a note of it because it actually helps you um, with your next part. I have to draw a line here, guys. I'm running out of room. Uh, where am I at here? So now I need to find acceleration. Okay, so there's going to be a little bit of rearranging here for acceleration. If I look at all the variables, I know I have displacement. I know that I have initial velocity. I know that I have time. I know that I don't have acceleration, but I'm looking for it, right? I know that I have time. Does this sort of um, fulfill all of my variables? Yes, there's uh, one unknown variable. All the other variables are known. So I can move things around a bit. I can say that the initial velocity is zero. So zero times time, that's going to be zeroed out. So my displacement is going to only going to be one half my acceleration times time squared. Um, let me sort of make some room here. So I can rearrange even further to isolate A. And I can say A is going to be equal to uh, 2 times 5.7 times 10 to the second meters divided by uh, 5.7 seconds so it's now it's <clears throat> two times the displacement instead of one half of the acceleration times the time squared so by popping that out it becomes two times the displacement uh, divided by the time squared don't forget to square the time uh, if you plug all of this into your calculator you're going to get uh, 35.09 meters per second squared. Uh, and then a rounded answer to that is going to be uh, 35 meters per second squared. It's going to say a uh, positive value because it's going up.